Oh, and thank you for joining us again on Interesting Individuals. I'm Bill Landing on Cable Channel 99 out of Michigan City. I am really pleased to be over here at Valparaiso University where I have a very special guest, actor Carl Mullen, who is giving the commencement speech today at the university on May the 20th, and he is taking a few minutes to say hello with me. Mr. Mullen, thank you so much for your time. A few minutes? Hello, how are you? <laughs> you know. And you are from the nearby Gary area, and you went to Gary Emerson High School. Let's talk a little bit about your background in Gary and growing up. Well, let's start with Gary at that time was a town of about 65,000 people, small town. And I really think that everybody knew everyone who was in the town. You either you knew you were on the east side or the west side or the south side. They knew exactly where you were, or Miller or Glen Park. And um, it, was a, it was a beautiful t city. It was um, a town which was completely steel. It was a steel town. And when the blast furnaces were going, you didn't have, need any night lights. They lit up the whole doggone town. It was a born town. You could go anywhere at all. You could move anywhere you wanted to, day and night, walk through the town. There was no problem. And I understand you did work in one of the mills for a short time there? I worked, I worked in the steel mills for three years. I started in the mill called the wheel mill and then I worked in a mill called number two open hearth and um, it was work you know, real work <laughs> and um, I enjoyed it it made a man out of me and I realized that there were other things you can do in the world besides working in the mills and let's talk a little bit about how you branched out and pursued the acting profession and whatever studying or schooling that you went through and then how you got that as the old saying goes that big break the big break, well, I started by, by um, well, when you work in the steel mills, no matter how long, the only thing you think of is, how can I get out of here? How can I find something else to do? And I happened to be interested in the theater quite a bit. So I um, went to the place called the Goodman Theater in Chicago, which is part of the Art Institute. And I stayed there for three years, learned some of the fundamentals, Went to New York, spent 20 years in New York, and in those 20 years I did 24 plays, a lot of failures. I had a few successes, but I had a lot of failures. And then in the 60s, I moved to Los Angeles, and I made um, so few films, some good ones. <laughs> and uh, the break came really in New York in a play called Streetcar Named Desire. And I happened to do the movie. And that was a kind of a turning point. If there is a turning point in my career, that was the turning point. If I may ask, you said you studied in uh, New York. If I'm not mistaken, you studied at the famous Actors Studio, which was the method approach of acting. Well, the Actors Studio is not a school, really. It originated in 1948, because at that time, it was the golden age of theater in New York, for, in the 40s and 50s. And... Um, Kazan and Bobby Lewis and Cheryl Crawford were saying these people who are in hit plays are doing the same thing over day and night, day and night, same play every night, and the poor people who aren't in plays are just begging to work. So we've got to find a place where they can call it a studio where people come in and work on their talent and what they've got to offer. And that's how it started. So it, 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 it ended up a school when Lee Strasberg took over. He made it a kind of school, but until that time, it was just a place to work, a place to come in and see, do a scene and find out you could do something besides being in streetcar every night or being in Death of a Salesman every night, one of those plays. So that's how it really started, and it served a purpose. And I think even today it's serving a purpose. It's a place where people can come and work. You said you made a few films. I know Streetcar Named Desire. You won an Academy Award for that movie, Best Supporting Actor. And please tell me a little bit about that role, that performance, and winning an Academy Award. You seem so surprised. You said you won an Academy Award for that. I'm, I'm, you know, it was a great play. <laughs> no, it was a great play. I did win an Academy Award. But uh, don't forget, I did it for New York for two years. So I really knew something about the part by that time. And uh, as a matter of fact, everyone in the cast, except Vivian Lee won it, Kim Hunter won it, I won it, but Marlon. Marlon did not win it. Marlon Brando. And please tell us the character you played. I played Mitch, who was really a mama's boy, who was part of this group of poker players, a rough sort of crowd. And he's the one who falls in love with the lead, Vivian Lee or Jessica Tandy, who played it in New York. 
And um, it's, it's, I can only say about Streetcar Named Desire, it's a beautiful play, it's beautifully written, the words are beautiful to say, and it's by a very, very, very talented young man who was a very talented young man, Tennessee Williams. All righty. Let's talk uh, just a little bit uh, here about some of the other films that are most memorable with you and some of the people that you've worked with in your career that stand out. Well, they all stand out. I, I enjoyed working, and I enjoyed everyone I worked with because that's part of acting is communicating one and f between one another in, in the scene. I've worked with uh, Paul Muni, Gregory Peck, James Cagney, Marlon Brando, Montgomery Clift, uh, Tyrone Power, you name it, I've worked with Those are some names right there. Paul Muni, was that a play you did with him? A play with him, yes, I did, in New, New York, called Key Largo by Maxwell Anderson. I do remember Paul Muni, I do. And I remember, yes, I do. Uh, I am a fugitive from a chain gang and a few others. And he did uh, Juarez, he did... Uh, um, the famous, famous people. A quick question, real, uh, just real quickly here, on Streets of San Francisco. That was a successful TV show you did in the 70s with Michael Douglas. And let's let get a comment on that real quick. Well, it lasted five years. And it was, it was a pleasure working with Michael. It was a family affair, really. Um, Perk Douglas and I worked together many, many years ago, around 1939 in Summerstock. And when this thing came along, I was to told to come into the office and meet the boy who the producer thought it'd be a good good man to play with, and I looked and I never knew I never met Mike before, and I went in and I saw and I said, "Yep, the boy'll do. He's he's okay," and the producer said, "Well, how do you know? You haven't even said anything." He says, "You see this?" <laughs> I said, "Douglas." I said, "Are you a Douglas?" He says, "Yes, I'm Michael Douglas." I said, "He'll do. He'll do," and that's how we got got to work. And it was a, a a pleasurable four years to work with him. Mr. Mullen, what are you doing nowadays? I'm talking to you right now. <laughs> Good one. Are you still residing in California? I still live in California, and I think I'll end up living there. And uh, it was, it's, it's a wonderful life I'm leading. All right. Looking back on your acting career, just what are, again, just looking back on it, how can you summarize it? I have summarized it. My acting career is over. I woke up one morning about a year ago and said, I've had it. After all, I've been doing this for 63 years, and I feel that's enough. Well, just myself having had the opportunity to see you on movies and TVs over the years, I've enjoyed watching your performances. You've been able to do villains. You've been able to do sympathetic characters. I was a big fan of Streets of San Francisco. I thank you so very much for the opportunity to meet with you and talk with you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you. A big thank you to Mr. Reggie Circle and all of the staff here at Valparaiso University for their assistance and cooperation and the opportunity to do the interview with Carl Malden. I'm Bill Landing. That will conclude this edition of Interesting Individuals. Back at the memorabilia show, and a lot of people, I'm sure, will remember this young lady who I have with me, uh, Cindy Williams. And, of course, her biggest hit that she's most recognized with is Laverne and Shirley. Cindy, how did everything go with you today at the trade show? That was excellent. Beautiful people, saw lots of old friends, most of the cast from American Graffiti was here, and we just had a great time. Uh, is it still basically uh, Laverne and Shirley that you are widely recognized for, or is there something else that people bring up? I would say that the answer to that is Laverne and Shirley. Yeah, and that show was really successful, and it was just uh, it was just really working girls, and you were just adorable in that because your character does she do you reflect about her a lot in real life? Do you think? Mm, you mean am I kind of like that character? Yes. Many in many respects, yes. Yeah, she was the cute, adorable one. Laverne was the more like bolder, outgoing one, and you were just the cute, nice type in that film. Well, thank you for that. Again, another compliment. Yeah. So, well, I know you're a little pressed for time. Cindy, and we're just glad that you had a chance to come on and talk with us. And anything going on real quick now? Uh, no, no, just finished, uh, just got back from doing a play, Moon Over Buffalo, for two months, and uh, looking forward to this new pilot season in Hollywood, USA. Cindy Williams, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hi, 
Hi, Bill Landing, along with John Baines, back on Interesting Individuals. We are in Rosemont, Illinois, at the Wyndham Hotel, where they are having a celebrity memorabilia program going on with a number of well-known people in films and television. And joining me now is Deborah Van Valkenburg. She is taking a few minutes after a hectic day of uh, having people at the um, table. Deborah, thank you so much for joining me. And how did your first day of the two-day event here go on October 17th? I had a lovely time. Everybody was very friendly very talkative. I, I learned a lot today, actually, but I just uh, appreciated the company. All right. And is there any particular film, TV program that people consistently seem to talk to you about? I would say primarily the Warriors. <laughs> and uh, that's my nighttime persona. And uh, Too Close for Comfort, Right. my daytime persona. Mm -hmm. All right. Did you have to compete against a lot of girls to get the role for or Too Close for Comfort, do you recall? I probably did. Fortunately, I didn't get to see every single person I was competing yeah. against because that would throw me off. But <clears throat> yeah, I, for the most part, you're competing with lots of people for these roles. So it was quite outstanding yeah. that they, they called me back and then shoved a contract in front of me. <laughs> and uh, where are you from originally? I'm from upstate New York. My family's from the Catskill Mountains. So. And then where did you first get involved in acting? Uh, a little bit in high school, a little bit in college, even though I was studying art. And uh, because college was in Brooklyn, I could very easily get into the city and start auditioning because by then I'd pretty much been bitten hard by the bug. <laughs> and then how did you migrate to California and how did everything got started for you over there? Technically, I was cast in a movie of the week, and they flew me out there, and then they fired me about an hour and a half after I got off the plane. What in the world was that all about? I think they had a fantasy about what I looked physically, and they auditioned me from the neck up. So when they saw me, they went, hmm, that isn't exactly what we thought we were hiring. Do you remember what the film was? It was just a TV movie. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You weren't in it. So, yeah, I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. So, well, what's going to be going on next with you as far as film work, TV? What's going on? Um, I don't have an air date for you, but I did finish shooting um, a movie for Hallmark. They do lots and lots of movies. And this one is called Working Miracles with Eddie Cibrian. And uh, I won't tell you any more than that. No, that's fine. We like the uh, suspense. You told me that Lydia Cornell, you tried to get her to come today, but she wasn't able to. <laughs> she's um, raising teenage boys, so she has her hands full. She's got a radio show. She's got a blog on her website. She's writing all the time. She's got the kids. And um, her husband's on the road at the moment, so she just couldn't get away. <laughs> Is she in the California area still? Yes. Well, Deborah, we want to thank you so much for taking some time to visit with us. It was nice chatting with you, and enjoy the rest of your stay in Chicago. Thank you. Thank you very much. Actress Barbara Luna is joining me now, and she did television and movies in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and she is at the trade show, and she's been a favorite of mine for many years, and it's great to have the chance to meet this beautiful woman. Barbara, how's everything been going today? Thank you. Everything is wonderful, except I prefer to be called Luna. Oh, you do?